be the number one fundraiser and protector. The CEO's financial responsibility. The report cards for CEOs are financial statements. Make the numbers is the obvious advice. But making the numbers is just part of the CEO's job financially. You have the vision, planning, and execution part of running the show along with cash flow, income, costs, and managing financial expectations of the public, your investors, and stockholders. Of all the parts of the CEO's job, finance is the area where you want the fewest surprises. People around you want to know that you are steering the ship on the right course. If you are providing surprises, you are sunk, says Chris Vargas, CEO of F Secure. There must be a means of knowing whether or not you are on course. The numbers and the analysis are the best methods available. Finance is a complex and arcane subject. People get wrapped up in the numbers and forget about achieving the purpose. Yes, you have an obligation to be administrative and tactical to produce profit and foster the profit into capital appreciation and to share on a regular basis that accrued capital with the people who produced it and you need you need to do this over the long term No doubt, the CEO must understand finance. The top person can't be illiterate about it. But you rely on the functional experts, the CFO or treasurer or vice president of finance, to do the market valuation methodology appropriate to your company, multiple of earnings, free cash flow, multiples of book value, capital structure, equity instrument, etc. As a CEO, you have to know how it comes in and how it goes out. If you don't have a handle on the numbers, you don't have a hold on the business. Everything works back from the numbers. That's how you know what kind of oil to put in the engine. The financial reports. Understand the key indicators of your business profitability and liquidity. The company's balance sheet, income statement, and cash flow, including the footnotes, the details behind the numbers reflect the economic details of the business. By manage those details properly, you have the information that will enable you 
to determine if you are achieving the overall financial goals that have been established. The CEO looks at it from a satellite to catch the big stuff, then zooms into the detail, says Mike Trufant, CEO of GNM Marine Inc. Read the financial statements of competing organizations. Get a detailed comparison of their organizations as compared to yours. You can learn about the effectiveness of different strategies, success or failure of products and services, and see new opportunities. Plus, see where they went wrong so you don't go there yourself. Ratio analysis is the key. It is the best means for analyzing companies of different sizes within the same industry. Also, if you are picking a company to compare yourself to, pick the best. Ratios are also very useful when comparing different years of a growing company. If industry standards are available, it's a good idea to see how your company compares against the industry norms. Indust Industry standards are useful because they smooth the effects of anomalies that may occur in just one or two cases. Remember, though, when you compare against the industry as a whole, you are getting both the companies and the bad says Peter Mackins, CPA of Santa Barbara Visiting Nurses Association. The CEO needs to know common sense areas like financial condition, accounting principles followed, controls, put in place to protect assets, how money is not being wasted, and why things aren't overstated. Measurements. These are indicators of your business health. Identify the three to five most important components for your business and develop some key ratios for measuring research. Hold it down to two to three key ones, like expense ratios or return on investment versus a whole stable of them, and look at them regularly. Or have less than 15% accounts receivable over 90 days, or 85% 85, 85 long-term loyal customers to measure and compare on a regular basis. This is where comparisons of industry standards can be helpful. It's important for the management team to see that news is news and that bad news must be dealt with routinely. Everyone involved must be encouraged to discuss the bad news and then 
take decisive and immediate action to correct it. Measurements are the red flags that are raised early and often. Frequently, you can learn more from bad news or from things that did not go as planned than you can from being right. You might be right, but not know why you are right. Good numbers or bad suggest how good the decision making has been in regard to assumption, says Jeff Cunningham, chairman of iLife.com. If you have made good moves on assumptions, the numbers will reflect that. The CEO has to make those decisions and assumptions. If you have a simple economic model that makes sense for your organization and you understand it, you have a navigable tool. You don't need a lot of complicated measures because you can get bogged down by the minute and is the big picture. The source of revenue. You must understand the revenue resources and what the true cost associated with generating them are which are fixed and which are valuable. You should be able to do a cost and benefit analysis based on numbers. You should understand your company's profit margins so you can keep your eye on the ball that produces income. You will also want to know from where or whom your revenue is derived. Is it from one or two large customers, which is much riskier and gives you less autonomy? Or is it from several customers who buy lesser amount? <laughs> Have checks or measurements that constantly review what you can do more or less profitably. Consider the effects over the long term versus the short term. And always make sure more money comes in than goes out. Anytime anyone who reports to you fails, it's your failure if you run out of money, it isn't the CFO's fault, says Kurt Carter, CEO of Carl Branson Inc. and America Inc. Expenses Understand the expense side of the income statement and be confident that it is being managed effectively and with good timing. There are always expenses you are responsible for but can control. One example is workers' compensation. You can limit the risk but you never control it. And there are legal and tax implications also. 
during analysis, you should segregate the codes which are not controllable from those which are controllable. You then have a true idea of what you have to work with. You do need to know the consequences of your action. The cost of what to do in a quick, responsive, flexible, and adaptable manner. And you need to know the cost of an exit strategy. Growth potential. I took this from a Walton Professor in a course I attended on value creation. I preached it until I fought ever since, says Wynne William, President of Planters Limited. The best CEO I know talk in these terms and they try to teach it because it isn't that hard and you'd sure like to have your organization help you. The purpose of business was cash from customer to investors. The job of management create value by facilitating that movement of cash. Create value by increasing revenues, decreasing expenses, decreasing cost of capital. There is no other way. Be able to evaluate new business opportunities, acquisitions, or partnerships. Have a general appreciation for depreciation, amortization, and tax impact. You understand what is most important, and then you pray a lot, says one CEO. The areas where only the CEO can add value. With the financial indicators in hand, the CEO has to be able to interpret, analyze, make assumptions, set targets, and take action. You add value by your broad knowledge and experience. Apple was loaded with financial wizard but was going nowhere. Jobs stepped back in with its knowledge and experience and the company had come back to life, said Hugh Sullivan, CPA. <laughs> The CEO adds value through his or her skills in planning, organizing, and controlling along with the field for the future to help the finance people work accordingly. The CEO here can extend to the tactical, the pricing structure of the product level of overhead, determining which customers are good and which are a waste of company resources, vendor, negotiation, etc. Where the CEO really adds the most value is in the interpersonal skills, integrity, persuasion, and 
negotiation and leadership arenas. Today, people don't look at financial performance first. They look at who is running the place and in what manner. Everything can't be reduced to numbers. There is the people's side. The CEO adds value with people and interpersonal skills. I came up the financial route at 29. They made me GM because they didn't want to give me title of president since I was so young. I could forecast and I could deal with plans to improve profitability. But financial training made me authoritative. When I became CEO, I had to motivate people, become a nice guy, could talk to others like I talked to finance people. That was never a part of, be of being a CFO, says Dave Horson, CEO of Tri-R Systems. Integrity is value. Some CEO makes make decisions that are wrong for the business, but right for his or her worry. For instance, the stock prices are spiraling and the CEO opts to tackle the marbles and run. That's uh, the moralizing dilemmas for the employees. The captain goes down with the ship. Of course, it's with a golden parachute. The CEO's ability to influence adds value by the type of people that are drawn to his or her circle. For example, the law, the law firm and accounting firm, the CEO hires. What do they bring to the table in terms of their resources and contacts in addition to their expertise? It's easier to attract a great management team if they see good people already involved then with a great management team they attract more money surround yourself with good people sell them on your vision and let them do their jobs <laughs> Even if you have a brilliant financial background, you need to let go when you are CEO. Don't depend on yourself. Despite your technical brilliance, you have too many other things to do equally well. The technical expert, expert. You must identify the one person or group you can trust to give an accurate analysis of the financial result and 
strategy. The person must have outstanding technical skills so that financial statements accurately reflect the performance of the company. The reflection of the results tells you what the, the analysis is more important because it tells you why, but that is sufficient. The person must also be above reproach and equally weak with integrity, be impeccable in character just like you are, be an effective two-way communicator, be a confident champion of the company of the CEO's vision, and be able to turn it into action. Have common sense. Have a temperament and personal chemistry that works with the senior team. Be someone you trust. It's a bonus if the person also is a strategic visionary. Has experience within the industry. Has experience with the type of activities your organization is going through, such as raising capital or IPO is recognized as a reputable expert, has a sense of urgency to get the right stuff done, is able to deal with day to day operations, information technology, and human resources. But most of all, you want someone who prudently manages finance and whose books are bulletproof, said Gary Lyons, CEO of Eurocrine Biosciences. You want someone you can trust and not worry about the 100 things they are doing. Because you know they will be done in the manner you expect. One entrepreneurial CEO told me about his CFO who was doing a good job. I have a great person running the place, better than me, so I've become chief check cashing officer. The basic job of the CFO is to be totally skeptical as they manage money, get money, and hold money. No doubt, fiscal conservativeness is good for sustainability. Conservatism doesn't exactly fit the CEO profile we've discussed in this book. Although one told me there used to be three parts to my job, get money, be a cheerleader, and say no. Now I'm devoted full-time to say why should 
I say yes. A CEO who is a visionary probably would need a CFO who is conservative. Conservatism is one of the generally accepted accounting principles and must be followed when presenting financial information. Essentially, it says when in doubt, take the course that understates revenue and overstates expenses. In recent years, the chairman of the Security and Exchange Commission, Arthur Leavitt, has declared war on bad financial reporting practices of, of overstating revenue and understating expenses. That includes intentional misstatement in financial reports. What is currently called managed earnings was formerly called cooked books. According to one U.S. attorney and practitioners applied for criminal prosecution and criminal prosecution means the CEO Fortune magazine listed a number of CEO as Baron who reported non-existent revenue to make a losing company look like a profit maker. Concocted first invoices and revenues to meet earnings goals. Invented customers and sales to show profits and red ink was the reality. Fabricated inventory data, overstated income, and got PR firms to issue ideas. To issue lies. And Ponzi scheme that defrauded investors of $450 million. Led step to record sales for products not shipped or even manufactured. And these are companies whose names you'd recognize. Today, of course, their CEO are serving time in federal prison or appealing sentences. One CEO I inter interviewed told me about his early entrepreneurial days when he thought he'd cut corners and go without a CFO. He hired an officer manager who proceeded to, among other things, not send in the payroll taxes. The IRS wasn't happy with him. I learned a valuable lesson. You can go to jail without the right advice. Today, I have a CFO who is also CPA. He's worked for a large corporation and had his own business. It's nice security. Public or private companies 
if you had a private company, you don't have to answer to as many people. Whereas, if you are public, you do. If, if you are private, you still have to manage expectation with lenders and private partners. And they are usually closer, probably involved day to day, and their reaction times to your decisions are faster. In a public company, the numbers and magnitude of investors can be vast. There's tremendous public scrutiny. You have the board, the shareholders, and the analysts and their predictions. Managing Wall Street is about managing what they will say. Wall Street is statistic crazed rules with a lot of specialized knowledge, desires of rich, says one CEO. In a public company, you need to deliver on expectations, but you need a hard, hard, hard reputation to One electric company manages from the balance sheet. They've done everything right financially. For 40 quarters, there has been an improvement in net sales and return on investment. But Wall Street turned its back on that and the stock price has suffered. There are nothing exciting or fancy. They are an old line of business. <coughs> the CEO continuously makes the profit, but he hasn't been able to use Wall Street to keep up its stock price. Before we went public, we pretended like we were. It was altering the company. It's just that we practic practiced living with the increased scrutiny in advance, for instance, closing books every quarter. The CEO is the form, the CFO the substance. That is not meant as a dick on the CEO, or a pat on the back of the CFO. It's just that the CFO is the reflection of the direction of the company. The CFO's image is a bit more practical, says Peter McKinch, CPA of Santa Barbara Nurses Association. Investors are tuned to find the next explosive something like the e-businesses, most of which haven't had a single quarter of return on investment. As Newsweek reports, if you cut cost, find new growth markets and please Wall Street. You will be richly rewarded. Miss your numbers and your goal. CEO who once counted 
their tenure in that case can now expect to hold their jobs for three or four years. One CEO said, We want a feeding French. We want people afraid to be out of your deal. Some CEOs say they spend up to 75% of their time with matters regarding Wall Street. Talking to analysts, talking with big shareholders, managing expectations, CEO have to be concerned about the stock price because their compensation is typically tied to it. The effective CEO under promise and overperform through real growth and managing expectation. Which simply means spreading in advance to people who care what could happen to increase their confidence in you. You are basically explaining your vision to key players. Some CEO fear Wall Street, some use Wall Street. It's much better to tell them how you are running the company than just reporting the number. And regarding the numbers, if we are going to make 30, manage their expectation by saying 24. That is better than promising 30 and letting them expect 35. Provide a positive earning surprise, never an unexpected negative. That's a sure way to generate a stock decrease. Now you have the e-business that don't fit the classic profit and loss issues. Recent history has shown you don't need to make a profit to get a good stock rating. Sure, net business revenue is price, but profits are not factored in as heavy. They are, of course, nice, but it is expected that in order to build a subscribe base, you need to spend enormous sums of money on advertising and retention vehicles. One company I've heard of purchases an item at $110 to resell it at $90. How are they ever going to get a return? Each company you see advertise, so their investors think so. Today, whether right or wrong, this is an example of a shared vision. It takes a different type of CEO and CFO to deal with the fact that they aren't showing a profit, but their stock is spiraling up. Nonetheless, of course, these companies can't go on forever without making money and just basing the value of the company on their stock. The most 
enjoyable part of the job is being the CEO of public company. Where you get graded and degraded all the time for optimizing the wrong things to make a company successful. The quarterly discipline is the least personally satisfied to have to justify. We did great last quarter. The company had gone from a half billion to nearly a billion. Every analyst says we are doing the right things. Our people were told they had the best earnings call ever. And the CEO is doing a great job. Then in their report, they said, sell the stock and our stock went down for points. If I could take this private today, I would, and I'd double the growth rate, says one CEO I interviewed.